What's going on, guys? It's Ricky from Volney Capital. We are here for another Volney Live. We are extremely excited for our guest tonight. We have Sabrina Soto. She was uh, originally back in the day. She was on the, tro the show Trading Spaces. Um, been long, long time fans of hers, so could not be more excited for tonight's interview. Uh, throughout the interview, we will collect all the questions, so keep sending them in via the questions option on Instagram, or you can send them in via the comments, and we'll collect them, and we'll get to them all at the end. But we've got Sabrina here, and we're ready to get started, so um, let's get going. Hi! Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. I put lipstick on for you guys. <laughs> I know, it looks like you're ready for a night out. This is this is the most action I'm getting today. So <laughs> there you go. How are you? How's everything going? Great, great. Just um, you know, trying to make the best out of this. I know it's wild. It's wild. Uh, but well, thanks for having us. Uh, extremely excited to have you. Long oh, che cheers. It's iced tea, <laughs> but it's fine. Pretend it's a cocktail. Um. Well, extremely excited to have you. Longtime fans really want to hear the story, how it all started, how you ended up where you're at today. So first off, kind of, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and then, you know, how you ended up, you know, on this career journey. Um, it's kind of wild. I've been now doing makeover television, I want to say 15 years or so. Um, and I found the HGTV job on Craigslist. No. Yes. Seriously. What? Yeah, it didn't say what it was for. It didn't even say what channel it was for. It just said that they were looking for somebody with design experience and TV experience. And I had both separately. I used to do TV hosting. And when I couldn't do hosting, I would do design, but I never did them together. So I sent in my reel and 16 weeks later, I was filming my first HGTV show. Jeez, wow. So what were you doing on the design side before the HGTV show? Was it just on I, the side, was it a hobby? Yeah, it was kind of like when I couldn't get TV work, I would do staging and design work um, and you know, I just would do one or the other. I would, I, back then I was doing more staging than design. Nice. So then let's talk about the show and then, you know, so those episodes and then kind of the details of what it was like, how long did it air for? And, um, you know, what was it like to be on that show back then? Cause it was really, with the, that's like the origination. Well, it was the first H, well, Trading Spaces, the, the first one I was not a part of. That was before my time. I was on the reboot that just was on last year at TLC. But HGTV, gosh, I want to say I've been, I've done like 300 makeovers yeah. and it's wild. I mean, every room was different. We, we hardly ever tackled kitchens because my shows, we just didn't have the budget at all. Right. Um, the times that we would do the kitchen, it would just be stuff that I would do like, you know, replacing some of the countertops or maybe like painting the cabinets and stuff like that. But we didn't really do big renovation, but every, every show usually took, we would start on a Monday and we would reveal on a Friday. Right. Oh, so quick. So yeah. We have, quick. So we, you know, obviously everyone who hasn't seen your Instagram page, it's like great inspiration on there, but kind of talk to you, talk about your overall design style. Um, you know, My, so what do you, I'm Cuban hundred percent. So I have, uh, I love vibrant colors. I don't do a lot of colors in the big things, but just, you know, usually, um, uh, my designs have some sort of pop of color and that just comes from my Latin roots. Um, I would say I'm colorful, California, accessible design. Nice. One thing we always get asked, and this is something we'll, we'll probably get questions later, but we can hit it right now. is like, where are the best places for someone to bring in pops of color in, in a design, whether it's in a living room or a kitchen? Because people always struggle with that. It's like, you know, what, what are the items that people should do? Yeah, I mean, I think in kitchens, because there's such an expensive renovation, there's a huge trend now of going of really colorful appliances. And it's all fine and dandy until five years from now, you're going to be so sick of it. I mean, just think of the avocado green appliances people used to have. So I still wouldn't necessarily do colorful, huge appliances in a kitchen, but like a cute toaster or a blender or tea towels on the cabinets or dishes, things like that. Um, but I, I mean, even I have like cookbooks in the corner there that, that are really bright. So just incorporate in like little dishes and stuff, incorporating in, in little things like that, cookbooks, books, tea towels, bowls. Yeah. And yeah. And like you said, those are something you can, you could change it with the season. If you right. want your, you know, one color during the fall and another color, color in the summer. Uh, and if easy. you do one color, I think 
uh, what looks really good is um, doing like the base cabinets another color because that can be switched up much more um, easily than appliances and things like that. But I, I do like seeing a fun color on base cabinets on, on an island. Yeah. What colors uh, right now are you seeing that are trending that you're liking for uh, base cabinets? You know, I think green is having a comeback, but like all shades of green, emerald, moss, um, earthy tones, things like that. So I, I really am kind of digging that. Um, so on the show or in life, when you're working on like different types of redesigns, what's your favorite space to design? And then, and what about it? Why, what, what draws you to that space in a home? You know, I think probably a, like a bedroom only because it's just, for, especially for the people that I'm doing it for, like, I feel like, especially parents, they save their master bedroom for the last thing on the list. So I like to just give, it's sort of like a little present for me to be able to do a, a master bedroom for really busy parents. But I mean, I love doing all different sort of rooms. I love doing kids' rooms. I love doing family rooms. I love kitchens, bathrooms. Powder rooms are so a lot of fun for me to design because I can be a little bit more crazy in a powder room since... You know, it's kind of like a secondary room. Nice. So for someone who is looking to say they're trying to spru spruce up their home or they're getting ready to sell their home, what are some ideas that people should do to, you know, affordable ways to increase the value or to make a, a big impact? I think, first of all, the inside of your house need to, needs to be decluttered. And even like I'm such a neat freak and now being quarantined, I've realized that even me, who is one of the most organized designers out there, I still have clutter in my house. So get rid of stuff. And then whatever you have left over, make sure you invest a little bit of uh, time and money on curb appeal. Because if people are driving by, they don't even like the front of your house, they're not even going to make an appointment to come inside. So definitely curb appeal and paint if you have the time and the money. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that you don't have to go and do a full complete renovation to get a significant increase in value. There's some right. simple things you can do. They but you see. would be surprised. I mean, my first show on HGTV was Get It Sold, and it was about houses that could not sell. And you would be shocked the places that I've walked into. Like, I, you knew I was coming. I'm not the publisher's clearing house. Like, you knew we were showing <laughs> up on Monday. People, I mean, you just get kind of used to living in a, a space, and I think you just overlook your own clutter. So maybe not now because we're all in quarantine, but get somebody, you know, we all have that really honest friend that tells us the truth when we don't want to hear it have that person come over and really assess your place. Yeah, I feel like I, you know, I'll like live with it for like a couple of weeks or a month and all of a sudden one day I'll just be like, what is all this stuff I everywhere? Know. Everywhere. <laughs> just piles up. Um, awesome, so what, let's run through all the different shows. I know you've been on a bunch of different shows on HGTV. Which, yeah. which part, what shows are your favorite? Which was, what's been your favorite? Uh, what things do you like from each show and, um, you know, What's My next? Favorite show on the HGTV shows was the Hilo project because I was able to really create a very very expensive room for homeowners, and if they liked it, I recreated it for a budget that they could afford. So to be able to really show high end design and match it with low end design was really fun for me. It was a bit of a challenge, but it really showed the viewer that you can have nice design even if you don't have a big budget, and that's my that is my like passion in life because when we grew up we went through a really really hard financial time and my mom always told me like no matter what even if we don't have any money you could still be proud of your house and it's as easy as just keeping it clean when you have company over so for me i'm not that fruit fruit designer i'm not into like spending a lot of money when you don't have to I'm all about budget design yes should they where should they be looking to find those budget items not, now online is like, oh gosh, there's so many online places to, to shop. Wayfair, West Elm, when they have dis, um, dis, sales and discounts, World Market, um, Target has a lot of great home stuff. Ikea, I still will buy some things at Ikea, not like big furniture, but little accessories. Ikea is great for that. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a ton of good options out there. Um, so we're going to, so everybody, we got a ton of questions coming in. Keep sending in the questions. We'll get to all of those at the end. So keep sending the questions. But we're going to play a little game that we've been playing with all our guests over the past couple months. It's called this or that. 
Okay. So you can just give us an answer or you can elaborate, but we're gonna, we're gonna run through a few different things. Yeah. So if you had to choose laundry room or a pantry? Oh. Laundry room. For wow. sure. I mean, I love a pantry. I don't even have a pantry, but that's probably why I want one so bad. But I mean, a laundry room, I think it's, it's more important. Yeah. I think one thing too that people should realize is that yet like there are great options for pantry, like full pantry cabinets. So if you don't have a space in a house where you can, you know, dedicate a room to a pantry, like doing a full size cabinet can work really well. Yeah. Um, next one, white kitchen or other? Oh, I, uh, I love a white kitchen. I know it's like kitchen, but I still love a bright white kitchen. So what about you? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, we've done so many, we've built so many white kitchens over the years that I'm so sick of them. Yeah. Um, but my, my house, I have a white kitchen. So I would say, you know, overall we, you know, the white kitchen still holds true. I, yeah. we're love, I love Navy, Navy base cabinets right now or black base cabinets. I do too. Matte black, gorgeous. Yeah. So we're doing some kitchens now where we're doing matte black all for all the cabinets. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. We'll see. We'll see how it comes out. Um, <laughs> You're breaking up a little bit. I don't know if you lost service. You see by me. Are people who are watching, do I seem like I'm breaking up? Can somebody tell us? Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. I am? Yeah. I don't know. You were, it was perfect and it just clicked out. I don't know. I have full internet. Mm. Should I... Log yeah, try in. to go to like the other side of the kitchen. See if it. Um... Yeah. Well, I'm right next to the inner. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, it's still oh, yeah. blurry. It's um, so bizarre. It's been um, acting up like this for the last couple of days. Oh, super choppy. Okay, I'm gonna try to come back on. Uh, yeah, drop off and we'll join back in. All right, so she's gonna join back in, guys. Keep sending in all the questions. Uh, we've got a bunch that we've brought in so far, so um, keep sending those in, and we will uh, we'll try to get to all of those. All right, she should be jumping on right now. Is it better? Much better. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you, are you starting to see clients asking for matte white appliances? So we haven't seen it yet. Um, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of talk about the colored appliances, the whites, the blacks. And but in the end, I feel like no one pulls the trigger. Yeah. Um, you know, we are considering putting them in some of our projects. But if what we just keep seeing is that people end up just want paneled or they want stainless. So for yeah. us to take, a lot of ours are built spec. So when we're taking that risk, it's, you know, it, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. I, I love the cafe appliances with the white and the, and the gold, yeah. uh, the gold fixture. It's, I can't wait to use it. But um, I also agree that that might, in like three or four years, you might look at that and be like, why the hell is there a white range in this person's kitchen? Right. Um, so, um, so this will keep going with this or that. Next one's up is uh, ceiling beams or built-ins. Built-ins. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like much more, so much more functional. They, you know, a, a great exposed beam done right can completely change the space. But 100%. overall, built-ins around a fireplace or a, a TV is just it changes the whole room. Totally. And and more functional. Um, farm sink or undermount sink? Undermount sink. Why? I don't know. I don't, uh, I feel like uh, the, the farmhouse sink is just something I'm kind of getting sick of seeing. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, we've been mixed. We like, I, we put farms, farmhouse sinks in almost every design, whether it's a white sink or a stainless steel. Um, I just think that it gives that extra high end look when it's just like the boring look of the front of the cabinet, but 
Um, yeah, that's true. It's like either a cabinet front or a nice like white or stainless steel. But I can see both sides. I want to try. We just got some in a gold farm sink that I haven't installed yet. Uh, a black farm sink and a marble farm sink. I think the black farm sink, though, I wonder if you're going to be able to see all of the food and everything. Like, it's just going to I'm sure, be messy I'm all the time. Sure, I'm sure it will. Luckily, it's in a rental development, and uh, the tenants will, will deal with that later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, fixtures. So right now, really trendy, matte black or gold? Matte black. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just, the gold... I mean, I, we're, we're using it a lot now, especially with like Navy kitchens and black kitchens, but I think we're going to look back in like three years, two years, and, and it's a lot of gold right now. A lot of gold. Um, accent walls, painted or wallpapered or none at all? <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do none at all, then wallpapered, then painted. I'm not a fan of accent walls. Unless it's like one or two shades off of the the regular like primary color in the room but like a colored accent wall no bueno all right let's 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 kind of spin on to paint in general because so we've been talking to a lot of designers on here over the past two months what are you seeing ideas of using paints in different ways so getting away from the standard idea of just painting the walls and then the trim being white um right. i know a lot of people I think are a starting lot of people are doing colored like window frames I'm seeing in not just black, I'm talking about blues and greens and different shades um, and also painting ceilings. Yeah. Um, and it's like the fifth wall. So how, how should someone consider doing that? If they're in their home and they're, they want to decide to paint a window or the trim a certain color or the ceiling, how do they make that decision and what colors should they use? Well, it completely depends on the person's decor taste, but I would scour pictures online on Pinterest to see what you gravitate towards, but always keep in mind the style of that house and what their, their trim looks like. Because if you have that really crappy old baseboards, like it's not gonna look good painted. So make sure that what you're painting should be accentuated, um, but just try it out too. I mean, really a sample quart of paint was what, five, seven dollars. Try it out in one of the, the windows, see if you like it for a few days and then you can make, you know, pull the trigger. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, couple more this or that. So we've got tiled backsplash or slab backsplash. Slab. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I, I love them both. We probably do them 50, 50 percent, you know, 50 percent marble backsplashes and 50 percent uh, slabs. I think if you want that clean look, you, it's very and it just honestly makes the whole process much easier. You get the countertop guy to template both. He comes in. He drops the countertop, comes back the next day, drops the backsplash, you're done, and you don't have any grout lines or any of that stuff to deal with. So I think if yeah. you have the budget for it, go with a slab backsplash. Yeah, that's what I have in the kitchen. I'm so glad I didn't do a tile. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, we've got a ton of questions. So we're going to start going through some of these guys. Keep sending in the questions, and we'll try to get to all of them uh, at some point in the next you know, couple minutes here. So first one up is from uh, Kirsten Riley asks, different color faucet than the hardware on my cabinets. How do I choose the best combination? I would do, well, you can never go wrong with matte black and you would do matte black with brass, gold, stainless. So if like when in doubt, depending again on the house, I think, um, matte black can really be switched out with anything. So I would go with that. I can record it with anything. Yeah. When, where do you recommend people search for hardware? I know that uh, there's a lot of places people can buy hardware and there's huge swings in price. Where do you think people should look? I mean, you could go anywhere from Wafer to Home Depot or even Anthropology, depending on the hardware. Um, I bought my kitchen hardware at Schoolhouse Electric. I love their stuff. Okay. And Rejuvenation too. Um, Hoffman 21, uh, I'm building soon and it's a, uh, and dreaming a fabulous butler's pantry that eliminates the counter clutter. Any advice on putting appliances in there and is, or is it better to leave them out in the kitchen? 
Um, if it's super close to the kitchen, I would put some of the appliances in there, a standing mixer, maybe even your coffee maker, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you have the space and you want to get things out, even your microwave, like things. Oh, yeah, for sure, microwave. Built in microwave in there, you know, toaster, all that stuff. Um, you know, even even ovens. If you have some people have these, we saw we had a guest on here who had a huge pantry and they put their ovens in there. Like an, you, you put something in the oven, you don't actually need it immediately. So it, it works as well if you want to keep the kitchen wide open. Um, TJ, I mean, you have to have a huge kitchen to have your oven in the pantry. This house, this, yeah, it was Patterson Homes and it was a monster house. Uh, he was, he did a, did a tour for us. It was pretty, it was, it was beautiful. Um, TJ66 asks, uh, what's something that I can do to make a white or black kitchen look unique? Accessorizing it. Artwork in the kitchen. People don't, People don't think of putting artwork in the kitchen. I mean, like even my kitchen, I have this huge piece of art right above the cabinet or the um, island, the kitchen island. So having some sort of personality with, with artwork, what's on the walls, your, your fixtures too. My um, fixture here on top of the dining table is yellow. So just having sort of color throughout the space in either the fixtures, artwork, or accessories on the counter. Let's do a quick tour and show us some of the stuff in your kitchen. People usually love to see. Um, um, okay. So, yeah, this is a huge, uh, huge island. Um, the, there's the artwork. That's the yeah. backyard. And it kind of spills into my dining area. Um, Built-ins. It's super simple. Um, I got the drawer microwave, which I don't necessarily recommend. Yeah. They're not the greatest. Um, and then just the hood here. It's a very small kitchen, really. This is it. And then yeah. on that side, I have the toaster and my coffee maker, my Nespresso machine. But have you, do you have the same problem with the drawer microwaves? Yeah, so we actually don't install those anymore because we just have, they're, one, they're pretty expensive for a microwave, you know, yeah. $1,500 to $2,000. And so what we use is the GE built-in microwave with a trim kit. So it's actually yeah. a standard microwave that would kind of be above a range, but it can be built into an island and it only costs like $400. Um, and we've had great luck with those. So we've stopped using the drawers. Just they, the, they keep, the functionality just keeps breaking and stuff. It's not even just that. Like, I, like because there's no dish or whatever, it doesn't even cook it very well. I, that was one mistake I think I made in, when renovating the kitchen. And I did a soft renovation to this house because it really didn't need a lot, but I just did the countertops. And I uh, painted, repainted the cabinets, and then I painted the island like a darker gray. Yeah. Is that a standard depth countertop, or did you do something extra thick on that? Um, it's for the countertops, I think they're two inches. Two inches? Nice. Yeah. Um, so maybe a little over two inches. Maybe it was two and a quarter. All right. We've got some more questions here. Let's see. McCarthy Sky asks, thoughts on a stainless farm sink with a gold faucet? You were just talking about that. Yeah. I, think it'll, I, I think it could look pretty. Yeah, I think don't overthink when you're using a fixture that's gold or matte black and say, and be worried about your, your, what your fridge is or what your sink is. You know, there's going to be multiple metals. So what I would do is tie in the gold from your faucet into your pendants or right. into your dining room light fixture has some gold in it. So like right. bring the metals together. Don't try to do all the same. Yeah. I think people get so uh, freaked out about mixing metals in a kitchen because there is so much stainless. So they think, Oh, if I have so much stainless that I have to keep everything stainless. And that's just not the case at all. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a little this or that question. So panel dishwasher, or slash fridge or show off the stainless panel panel yeah i think if you have the budget for it i would highly recommend going with a panel option KitchenAid actually does one that is not that expensive i think they're the lowest price panel option so if someone out there wants to do a paneled set of dishwasher and uh refrigerator KitchenAid's a great option and it falls thousands of dollars under the standard paneled options. Um, so uh, Micah already asked favorite source for cabinet hardware. You kind of already touched on that one. Um, 
For Strat Decor, when renovating your home, is it risky to pick trendy styles that can easily go out in just a few years? Of course, of course. But if you're gonna live there forever and you really love the look, by all means. But I mean, what do you think? People renovate their kitchen every what, 10 years, 15 years? Or longer. <laughs> or longer, well, yeah, or longer. And I just feel like when you're doing trends on something that you're gonna have for 15, 20 years, it's just not necessarily a great investment. Yeah, and but I think you, say that you can't still be adventurous. Yeah, and, and, and if you decide to sell your house in five or 10 years, you can always repaint the, the base cabinets to white, or right. you can change out the hardware from gold, especially gold. If you wanna do gold right now, do gold. You change the fixtures, you change the faucet, the gold is gone, right? right. Maybe don't do the Schluter edge. We're doing that right now. We're doing gold Schluters to match the faucet. Maybe stick with a white or a stainless on the on the Schluter edge, um, just to make it easier. But uh, just you go for it, and you can always change it later. Yeah. Um, uh, Jackie sixty three asks, "What do you think about uh, on the oven wall being right next to the fridge, so like oven next to the fridge?" Um, I don't mind it. I really don't mind it at all. What do you What do you think about it? I mean, I've seen a lot of kitchens that I've done that that actually was the only option to keep it next to the sink. Yeah, don't personally don't overthink this whole triangle. Triangle. It's it's where it, every kitchen has to be designed on its own design. Where the walls are, where the window is. You can't all of a sudden think like you hear, I hear this question all the time. Like, oh, well, what about the triangle? It's like this, your kitchen doesn't fit a triangle. Your, your kitchen, right. the, it's, it's tiny. Like we're, we're, work, we're barely able to fit all your appliances. Um, you know, so I think that's where, you know, you have to work in the space that you have. Mm, looks like we might, uh, are you back? Looks like we might have lost Sabrina. Maybe she will jump back on. You back? Nope. All right, guys. Yeah, keep. we got all these questions. Keep the questions coming. We'll probably go for another 10 or 15 minutes. So if you guys have questions, keep sending them in. Um, I feel like she has some amazing insight on... Yeah. I don't know. Dang. It's, it's all right. I have no problem. And then when we go live, then all of a sudden it's. <laughs> it's all good. Um, all right. We got a couple more here. Uh, what? Yeah. K KJO. This is one we get all the time. What trends do you not like and that you think people should stay away from? The super colorful appliances. Like, yeah. like I'm talking about like bright robins, like blue. Orange. Yeah, orange. I'm seeing a lot of orange in kitchens too, but just stay away from the really bright colors. Yeah. You know what would be cool is if those appliance brands actually made, which it might be possible that those, that they, you could actually easily unscrew and switch out the front panel. Um, yeah. Look, you um, just probably, something? you just invented something. Bertazzoni or whatever you guys are, you keep DMing me. Why don't you guys figure that out and we'll, we'll use you. you. Um, uh, all right. Um, Durgans and Sons pot fillers. I see you guys, you have one, yes or no. And how much are they actually used? I use mine, but I don't think it's necessary. What about you? We, <laughs> I catch myself filling up the pot in the sink and then I get back to the, to the oven and to, and I, and I look up and I'm like, oh shit, there's a pot filler there. <laughs> yeah, because it actually doesn't really make sense because you find you'll go put the water in here, but you still have to take it back to the sink to undo it, like to drain it. Yeah, unless there was a drain there as well, you're right. still carrying the water. Um, yeah. it, it really doesn't make any sense. I guess no. you want it to top off. It's, it's a nice to have, but the expense of the plumber running it and the fixture, scrap the pot filler. 
Um, uh, UD15, do you ever foresee whitewash or pickled cabinets coming back? I do. I don't yeah. think it's like the, the country pickled, but the white wash of wood for sure. Yeah, you're starting to see it already. There's a lot of designs now coming in with like white oak that's gotten a, a bleach to it or like a whited out a white oak cabinet. It's, yeah. I think, I actually think that in the next two years, you'll see a lot of whitewashed oak cabinets. 100%. Um, a lot of white oak. Yeah. Uh, white oak with like flat white panel uppers. Um, uh, Liz Beth Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. I don't know if you're actually a doctor. Uh, black, and, black and white oak for a kitchen. What? I'm not sure. Bl not really sure on that one. Sorry. You could... You can send us another message, but um, black and white oak. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, Fly Girl asks, wall panels, uh, can it be satin paint or semi-gloss paint? On the panels? I guess. So maybe on, like, if you're doing paneling in, like, uh, in, like a dining room, what type of finish should you use on those, on those panels, like on a chair, chair rail panels? Yeah, I mean, uh, usually something that could be wipeable, but I mean, now manufacturers are getting so good at making their their paints, even their flat paints, scrubbable. But I would say for the most part, you'd want something with a little bit of a sheet. So you want like a satin or eggshell or semi gloss. Let's talk about paints anyway, because I feel like that's something that people are. So talk about the different finishes of paints, where they should kind of be used in a design. And yeah. so that because I feel like so many newbies, even I, I half the time, I'm not even sure what we should be using on window trim slash the wall slash, you know, all that. So, you know, what are the different options? So for the most part, when you're doing baseboards, trim doors, you're going to want to use either a semi gloss or a high gloss, depending on the look that you want. Um, for walls, I like to keep all walls flat matte always. But if you're using it in like a kid's room where there's going to be tons of scuffs, make sure to make the investment in higher quality paint. So Aura for Metro and more, something like that, because that matte paint, the higher end paints can be scrubbed down. So they have that same durability as a semi-gloss would. Um, but for the most parts, yes, semi-gloss are doors, trims, baseboards, and then matte for walls, except for bathrooms, I would still have a sheet. So like a set, satin or uh, eggshell. Yeah, I think, you know, you're, if you're someone who just heard that and you're like, oh, yeah, what's the difference between paint qualities? It doesn't matter. I can assure you, we did a project and we caught a painter using a base, horrible, bottom of the level uh, quality paint. And we walked in and we saw all these scuffs, like just, and you couldn't get them off the walls. And we asked yeah. them, we saw the paint, and we had to repaint the whole place. Yeah, because the, the paint, yeah, because first of all, higher quality paint, you won't have to do as many coats. So you actually, at the end of the day, you kind of, it's a wash because for the amount of coats you have to have for cheaper paint, it's going to cost you more time. It's going to be a headache. So spend the little bit more money on the higher quality paint. And there's, and even Bayer makes a great uh, paint and primer and one too, that's of good quality. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to break the bank. There's good paints out there without going crazy. Right. Um, KJO asks, uh, would you consider using shiplap? Should I lay it horizontally or vertically? Depends on how big the room is. But yeah, I still, I mean, obviously everybody's saying how they're getting tired of the shiplap lap look, but I still think it looks great. In yeah. Some we, cases. There's so many haters on shiplap and I think, but it's, it's still, it's still great. I think done right in the right space. It, it's beautiful. I think it will always be around. I mean, it's been That's around awesome. forever. It's yeah. been around forever. It will right. still last forever. Yeah. Um, Alyssa Ramones asked, have you ever painted a faux brick uh, that's on a fireplace? Faux brick near a fireplace? So like, a, like I, bet you it's, I bet you it's like a brick veneer that was put on a fireplace. Can they paint it? Um, you can paint anything, really, but it's if it's the faux brick made out of, uh, if it's like the actual still veneer then you could still paint yeah you could paint it i would use usually any sort of, any sort of semi-gloss paint should work fine with that because you're not going to be getting it wet or anything like that so a latex semi-gloss yeah 
And if you paint it and it looks horrible, you could always, and you're going to redo it anyway, rip it off and then put up better stuff. There you go. Um, Nash, Na you're, uh, you're blurry again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's all good. Um, uh, so uh, I need to pick a backsplash. I, I hate all the backsplashes. I need help. Help. I mean, that's a pretty broad question. I don't even know what the kitchen looks like at all. I, are people still yeah. asking for subway tile in the backsplash when you're doing kitchens? No, everyone wants something, you know, at least a little more, a little more to it than just a white subway. Um, yes. I mean, there's, there's so many options out there. I think, you know, one, one simple rule is if you have a busy countertop, don't do a busy backsplash. Absolutely. So if you if you have like veining or or a granite like that, you need to go simple on the backsplash. If you've got a like we we always it's either a busy countertop with veins and marble look, and in that case, it's a simple white backsplash. Um, you no, know, we use uh, Ann Sachs has some great tiles. I like, love Ann Sachs, man. Yeah. So like, do you still think people are are people um, your clients asking for concrete tile still? So we that trend, I mean, it, it went for like a year or two. We probably did four or five kitchens. Um, and then now it's it's passed. We haven't had any any requests for concrete backsplashes. Um, it honestly it, it it looks great in pictures. Um, you know, it like a concrete backsplash yeah. really pops in photos, but the functionality on a day to day basis, I wouldn't recommend it. Um I, yeah. I personally love the look of like all different types of marble mosaics. So if you have a, just a pure white quartz countertop and then any cool marble mosaic backsplash, whether it's Riad tile, tile bar, and sacks, any of those options can look awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, KJO also asks, this is a question we get all the time. How do I add character to a new house? How do you add character to a new house? Um, if you have the money to try to customize some pieces, but it you add character by surrounding yourself with things that you've collected throughout your life. I mean, your house should tell your story. So by just infusing your furnishings, your artwork, and your story into a house, regardless if it's a brand new house, that's what's going to bring character, even if it's, everything is cookie cutter. Yeah. Um... Let's see. Elizabeth asks. Uh, okay, so okay, okay. Here she she clarified her question. Okay. I have black cabinets, and then I have white oak cabinets. Is and that's her plan. She wants to mix the two. So like a black oh. cabinet and then a white oak cabinet. Yeah, hundred percent. I love it. Yeah, love it. New trend for sure. White. I think the matte black with the white oak or white with a with a white oak. Yeah, really cool. Um, Lady Tulip, countertops, still using quartz? Yes, I have quartz in my house and I love it. What about other options? Is there anything else you consider or do you always direct people to quartz? I just like quartz because of the maintenance. I mean, obviously I love marble and all that, but it's just, it's higher maintenance. And I think nowadays the Quartz manufacturers have done such a good job really recreating that character in the veining that I feel like it's still such a great option. What do you normally in, put into the kitchens? Yeah, so we always direct people to quartz. I mean, it you, there's there's quartz now that looks so close to a marble that yeah. you can get it for a more affordable price and it's consistent, right? Yeah. I can guarantee you that if I pick this certain quartz, it will always look the same. The veins will always match up. Whereas if we are trying to find the right slab of marble, yes, it's amazing. It can look stunning. Like my house, we have, you know, we went with uh, super white quartzite, but it took me like four months to find the slabs because I needed the perfect slab and I paid a hundred dollars a foot. So yeah. it was like, you're going to, it's, it's not worth it. You should you just use quartz. Um, and the other thing too, like people want like concrete countertops. Some of the quartz brands now make, they make countertops now that feel like concrete. They make them leathered so it feels like a like an actual stone. Yeah, um, you can do everything so with quartz. Really great products. Um, Pooja, I can't pronounce your Instagram handle. Uh, Waterfall Island 
versus having the island painted a different color from the cabinets? Oh, um, I like both. And you can do both. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you have an island that has, you know, your, you waterfall it on both sides, you can still have the under panel of it pop as a new color. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, both are amazing. When you're doing a waterfall though, sit down your countertop guy and make sure he understands the veining and the templating. Because yeah. if, he, if he shows up and they don't match up, you shouldn't pay him. Yeah, um, and it looks horrible. It's the worst. Um, and, and they will mess it up. So <laughs> make sure you talk to them about it because they'll try to throw in that extra piece from the corner that won't match up. Um, Life Flores asks, for window treatments in my kitchen, what's trending? Um, I don't, I would never use anything, um, heavy in a kitchen just because of the cleanliness, you know, you want to be able to, to re remove it. So I wouldn't use like big panels, but I just like looking at like roller blinds or, or just like shades on in a kitchen, nothing heavy, no cafe curtains, nothing like that. Yeah. How, and that's another question for my end, like deciding on window treatments that are out of home. I feel like I have no clue what to put in like this house this house this is one a vacation house of ours it was done by like a professional designer we bought it fully furnished it's fully designed window treatments everything stunning i would have no idea how they did this but like what how did those decisions get made well it depends usually in a, in a ba bedroom you want something heavier just for light blockage but also to give that texture so i would put panels in bedrooms but like secondary, in, even in a dining room, because it's a little bit more formal, but for like a family room, kitchen, bathrooms, I like to keep things simple with just shades. Yeah. Um, this is a question we get all the time. And I, I still haven't seen a kitchen that actually fits this, but should I do two islands or one in my really large kitchen? I mean, <laughs> I think I would rather have one large island rather than two separate islands i feel like a lot of people put two islands and they end up still using only one yeah i i i can't see the reasoning behind two islands with walking space between both I if, you're, it. if you want to you know if you're going to go for go for if you have a kitchen with that space go with a full slab or even or bigger island with yeah, seating on all si on all sides of it yeah um, jumbo slab. yeah you know so i don't think you need to go multiple or do a built-in like seating into the island. Yeah, 100%. You know, you don't need that extra double island. Um, it's Shoe Love asks, is it cheaper to buy new cabinets or repaint the color that is desired? Repaint, 100%. If the, the style of the cabinets and the fronts are fine, then repaint the cabinets. So how does someone know if a cabinet can handle taking on a new paint job? I mean, you have to stand it down first to, to remove the sheen of what the existing paint and then prime it um, and then painting it. But I think for the most part, the, the investment you're going to make just repainting them, even if it's only going to last for a few years, is a lot less than replacing all of your cabinets, even the fronts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's the other option. If the front can't be fin refinished, maybe the quality's not there, you could always go to a cabinet man manufacturer, local company, and have them just remake the fronts for you right. and then paint the rest of the boxes. Yep. Um, Frank Shelving Diaz, uh, for the floor, what's the best to use? Wood, tile, marble tile? I mean, it depends. I have wood in my kitchen because it just is throughout the entire house. Um, I mean, it really depends on the look. And, but I, I love this, especially if you have an open concept, I like the seamless look of just the wood throughout the entire house. Yeah, I just, the, the, that line of the changeover from the, 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 the tile in the kitchen into the rest of the house, it just, it just ruins the whole feel and the flow. I, I agree. Um, Patty, the Creighton mom asks, have you ever used epoxy wood mix on the countertops? No, I haven't. Have you? No, I don't know how that would work. Um, this is a good one is uh, porcelain countertops. Would you do that? Um, I have.
cabin. I have never even put that into a client. Have you used porcelain countertops? No, and having talked to a bunch of, you know, we had Imperial Kitchen and Bath out in New York City. He's a good friend of mine. And he was talking, he's, you know, talked to me all about porcelain. It's really, it's, there's no need to really do it. It, it Quartz can do the job. It's stronger, less brittle, won't break, easy to work with. Um, there's a lot of trends now towards por to porcelain, but it's, it's not, an, it's, there, it's not necessary. Quartz accomplishes it and it's easier to work with and less money. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I would say stay away from it. Um, got a couple questions. Well, a couple more here. Um, is this a real question? What is it? <laughs> about, about bleaching your hair. Is that something you've talked about before? Wait, what did they say? <laughs> you've said before you've used facial hair bleach to lighten your actual hair. How? <laughs> First of all, I don't know who's asking this, but don't do it. I just ruined. Oh my gosh. I love it. I seriously <laughs> turned my hair. I tried to do it the other day and I turned my hair orange. So uh, maybe it wasn't <laughs> the best idea, but oh Nicole, my gosh. Nicole, so curious. Nicole's got some inside information. Oh no. Is Nicole on right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what else we got here. Um, What floor do you suggest for a modern country style kitchen? Wood. Yeah. Uh, I, I never knew how to use those Q and A things. We just figured it out a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just figured that out. I've a uh, new built home and I'm looking at a light gray kitchen uppers with a deep navy island. What worktops do I use? What co what color top? Countertop. I mean, I love the I love white, like a queer marble. Yeah, I think with that design, white, yeah. navy, you could either go go with a marble, go with a pure white quartz. Either yeah. of those would work. Um, work great. All right, what else we got in here? All right. Um, different color faucet than hardware on the cabinets. How do I choose the best combination? So we've had this couple, yeah, question, had couple this times. Call. Any sort of metal with a black will always be timeless. Um, we've got ja It's Jack asks, can you tell us about one of your favorite projects you've ever done? Um, oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, all of my high level project shows, I loved working on that show and the crew, like we were a family, we had a great time together and just um, that entire series, I think was my favorite show on HGTV that I've done. Um, but being able to work with St. Jude, um, doing a lot of charity work for them and then doing um, the White House Christmas a few years back was really, really fun too. Nice. Um, Micah asks, cast iron sink, question mark? Why not? Try it. Um, Huns4 asks, kitchen alcove or open shelves next to my range? Um, I love the look of open shelves when you don't have a lot of stuff. But if you cook a lot, I can't see when people who are like, how much I cook, my spices are a mess. Like, I couldn't imagine this just being open. Like, why would I want everybody to see that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to walk in and see that no, open. I don't even want to see it. Um, uh, TJ asked, TJ66, what shade of wood or finish on my floors? Ugh. I don't, I definitely, definitely not dark. No more dark floors. My goodness. So I still like, I love the whitewash that's going, the oaks and the grays still for the floors. What about hardwood that's been that gets stained and sanded or a pre finished floor? I like just an old hardwood that gets stained. Yeah. Sanded and stained. Um, 
All right. Well, that is all the questions we've got. Thank you. Gosh, guys, thanks for being here. Sorry for the back and forth popping on and off, but I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having us or thanks for joining us and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks. Bye.